Hello everybody and welcome to the Greekosophy channel, the channel where you learn everything about Greece, the true authentic Greece. My name is Tam and in today's video I'm going to do another reaction video of one if not my favorite YouTuber uh, and that's Mark Wins and his channel uh, Migrationology. Uh, again, he is. Uh, this video is based on his uh, trip to Crete uh, and sampling some traditional Cretan food. Uh, so if you're hungry, pause and eat something first because you're going to get seriously hungry if you're watching this video with an empty stomach. Uh, but let's begin. I'm going to put, as always, my headphones so I can hear. And this particular video is called Greek Islands Food Tour in Crete. Seafood and mouth-watery gyros in Hanya. Very, very nice it sounds. Uh, I'm gonna put my headphones on. I'm gonna put the link of this particular video you're gonna see today uh, in the description below as well as Mark's um, social media uh, so you can check his other videos and let's begin. The flavor of that lamb is just bursting. I'm willing to, to put my bet if I bite right here, it'll just slide right off the bone. Now that is pure joy, pure lamb joy. Okay, so we can already see <laughs> what is going to happen in this food tour of Hania. Um, I'm not gonna say what you've just seen there. I'm just gonna keep it because we're gonna watch it uh, as the video progresses. So the trip to Hania in Crete. Let's see. I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens and I am in the beautiful little town of Hania, which is on the island of Crete in Greece. This is a place I've always wanted to visit. I'm excited to be here. Today we're gonna explore Hania. I'm gonna give you a full food tour. We're gonna eat some incredible local Cretan food and Greek food. Right, um, just uh, something uh, uh, to, to let you know, uh, most English-speaking people uh, called the uh, town or city uh, Hania. Uh, the correct Greek pronunciation is Hania, the emphasis on the last syllable, Hania. Uh, I come from Iraklion, uh, another city in Crete, uh, but I have to admit that Hania is uh, more, more beautiful than Iraklion. <laughs> I know that uh, a lot of you are going to say, how dare you, etc. Uh, but yes, it is a very, very beautiful uh, city uh, and very well preserved, the old town uh, in the western uh, part of Crete. Uh, so looking forward to see what Mark is going to sample there. Let's have a look. Food, and then we're going to do some sightseeing around Hanya. So stay tuned. This is going to be a day of food and sightseeing of the amazing town of Hanya in Crete. On our way first to go eat an extremely popular local breakfast, uh, which is just outside of the old city. But one of the joys of being in Hanya is just exploring the old town. These are actually the, the old walls, but then if you walk through this, there's so many cool places. And it has so much character. It's so charming. It's... Yes, I'm not going to say a lot about the city of Hanya. Uh, hopefully, once the COVID restrictions uh, are lifted and we can travel abroad, uh, I plan, because I come from Crete, to travel around Crete and be able to show you some <laughs> videos from Greece. Uh, so I'm not, not, not going to tell you a lot about Hanya, uh, but it is a beautiful uh, city. Uh, the old part of, of the town is narrow streets uh, and you can just get lost um, uh, looking around and, you know, coming to some little squares with uh, a lot of locals and a lot of lovely places to shop, to browse and to eat as well. It's just absolutely beautiful to just get lost in the network of, of old lanes and alleys within the old town. One of the best things you can possibly start your day with in Crete is bugatsa, an incredible Greek breakfast pastry that will surely satisfy all of your melted cheese dreams. This is kilo? Yes. Okay. You see a lot of things with this? Yeah, lots of very, very thin. And is it olive oil? Yes. Okay, before we start looking at the burrata, and I know you're looking forward to it, um, burrata is a very controversial um, pastry in Greece. And that's because the definition of burrata 
to the north of Greece uh, is different to the definition of Bogatsa in the central Greece around Athens uh, and the south. Uh, when I was living in Greece uh, years and years ago, um, the idea of Bogatsa in, in the center of Greece and the south was actually that it was, you know, filo pastry filled with some cream, sort of, I wouldn't say it custard cream, no, it's, it's a very nice sweet cream that you use. And that was the idea of Bugatza. However, the correct, in my opinion, definition of Bugatza is not in the filling, but in the actual filo. The filo pastry, as you will see, most probably in this video, uh, is very unique. It takes a lot of effort, it needs uh, very good training. Uh, so in the north of Greece, for example, but nowadays in the rest of Greece, uh, if you go to a place where they serve traditional bugatza, it's the filo that makes the difference, and then the filling depends on the area. Up in the north of, of Greece, they even have minced meat as a filling, they even have sweet cream as filling. Uh, in other places, in other islands, etc., where you find places to sell bugatza, they use, for example, local cheeses, and they give it a, a, a different sort of flavor. But the important thing to know that is Bugatza is all about the pastry rather than the filling itself. But let's have a look as to what is going on there. Wow, well, okay. They have the, the shop back here where the kitchen is, where, where the uncle is uh, cooking and he's the one, he is the chef of the Bugasta. And uh, his son walked me over here. It's a different shop uh, hidden back in the alley here, whereas the, the storefront is the cafe. And so. He makes the bugasta so delicately and so beautifully, and, and he just takes his time to take that, that phyllo and make it extremely paper thin. You can actually see through it. Uh, it's, it's, it's so thin that it's translucent. And then he adds on another type of dough, and then folds it up, and then he adds on a handful of the mysticia. Mis so you can see already how thin that phyllo pastry is, and, and you need a marble top, really, to, to create that, that phyllo. And be able to stretch it it's so elastic to stretch it so thinly and then fill it up with uh, uh, you know the the bugatza um, I think from from what I see from the color there it's it's not the usual um, sweet cream that uh, you know normally bugatza has most probably that is with some cretan cheese uh, in there it makes it so white maybe uh, misithra um, uh, or something like that so let's see what it's happening Mizithra. 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 Okay, they, they yes, uh, as I said, uh, yeah, uh, it is the Mizithra cheese. Very, 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 very tasty cheese in Crete. Uh, and you get, get uh, salty Mizithra that goes into pastries and uh, little pies. Uh, or uh, we call Analati Mizithra, which means without any salt. Uh, and that is a very acquired taste. I love it because you can put it in breads, in... Um, uh, rusks as well uh, and it's really nice uh, but this one I think it's the salty uh, Mizithra but you can see already the, what I call the Greek um, measure of, of, of food you know there's no if you, if you see the, the pastries around the world you have a little bit of tiny filling inside them there's no tiny about this filling you know grab a massive handful of it and slab it in the pastry you told me that it's a mixture of sheep and goat cheese and it's a very type of it's a very popular type of cheese in Crete, uh, made in Hanya. And that's really all there is to it. And then it's also a lot of uh, olive oil, which is uh, very famous in Crete as well. And so he uses olive oil to, to make these pastries. Then they bake in these ovens right here until golden perfection. And then they transport them over to the storefront to serve them. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> So you can either order your bugasta here uh, plain with no sugar or cinnamon, or they'll they'll add the sugar for you, or they'll serve the sugar and the cinnamon on the side for you, and you can add as much as you want. So I decided to go for no sugar at first, and then I might add a little bit uh, as I taste it. Okay, um, a little bit of a mistake there for Mark. I would personally never eat bugasta without. It's not sugar. It's well, it's sugar, but it's icing sugar, icing sugar and cinnamon. It just gives it such a great dimension. Um, without it, it's 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 tasty, but you know, bugalza it has to go with icing sugar and cinnamon. 
Um, now, Mark mentioned there that it's a breakfast thing. To be honest, bugatza, you can eat it at any time of the day. You can have it with your morning coffee and it's very nice. You can have it as a quick snack around 12 o'clock uh, in between, let's say, your uh, uh, just before lunch time when you go at home at 2 to 30 to eat lunch. Uh, or you can have it in the afternoon or you can have it late, late in the early hours of the morning after you come back uh, from uh, uh, clubbing, etc. Uh, and you feel hungry. Uh, I'm sure you will come across a pastry shop that has bratzas uh, and, and you can have it there. Uh, but I would definitely recommend that you try at least once a bratza in Greece uh, because you will fall in love with this particular pastry. Uh, but definitely, definitely sprinkle uh, lots of ice and sugar and uh, cinnamon in it because it is amazing with those two ingredients. Look at that ratio of cheese to, to phyllo dough. It's just a couple layers of thin phyllo and then you've got just, just a, a heap of oozing melting cheese in the middle there. That is, that is beautiful. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, that cheese is really sharp. Um, a little bit sour and then you've got just the very thin layer of the phyllo which is crispy and right now with no sugar on it it's not sweet at all it's just like a it's just like a giant cheese pastry yeah i guess it's it's the savory side of bugatza um uh, yes mizithra the, the the salty one can be quite salty quite sharp um uh, so I've never tried bugatza with mizithra cheese before, I have to admit. So I'm not sure whether uh, it's, it's a flavor that will blend into my idea of, of bugatza. Uh, but it's definitely one worth exploring, especially if you're, if you're in Crete. Uh, but let's see if he tries it with icing sugar and, uh, and cinnamon and see. Oh, this is the real deal right here. And the coffee has just arrived. That is the perfect accompaniment to a... Okay, I have to stop again here and tell you, if you are in Greece, and especially if you like your coffee, you have, you have, you have, you must, I'm going to be very angry with you if you don't, try a Greek coffee. Uh, now, uh, it comes in little pots normally, uh, but you can have a double one, which is slightly bigger. Uh, but it's very, very aromatic. When it serves to you, it's very aromatic. And forget, you know, methods of making coffee. You know, forget coffee machines, forget uh, brewing coffee, forget the filters uh, or anything like that. This, uh, it, it's a specific way to make this coffee. It takes a little bit of effort. Uh, and when it comes to you, don't drink it immediately because the, the coffee granules are still there and they're quite thick and they slowly go down to the bottom to form a paste so you let it a little bit and then you start sipping don't drink it once just sip it and enjoy it um, and you will see it's very 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 nice uh, and another thing is never 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 ask for milk in your greek coffee no <laughs> uh, you don't put milk in a greek coffee uh, so sip it nicely and once you see that towards the bottom you start seeing the uh, paste at the bottom that means that you need to stop drinking it because you don't want to drink that that paste It's it's not good. It's not good, uh, but you can have the coffee uh, Sketo which means without sugar. It's quite bitter. So be warned uh, or uh, Metrio which means half and half which means that you know for every let's say teaspoon of uh, uh, Coffee you will have a teaspoon of sugar uh, or a glico which means sweet, you know a more sugar uh, that is, is down to you, but you need to tell the person who is making the coffee when you order how you want it Because the sugar goes with the coffee and then they're brewed together uh, If the coffee comes to you and you start adding sugar then it's it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work Okay, so let's see Mark and John a Greek coffee to a mound of melted cheese in the morning for breakfast <laughs> Oh, it's nice and stout. Oh, yeah Oh, that, that that is just a must, and they go so well together. They're so they're so complementary. To be honest, I'm so satisfied with no sugar or cinnamon. Yeah, I just want to eat the whole thing like this. But I will try a little bit with the. This. Okay, slightly surprised them. Maybe maybe the people there didn't tell Mark, but uh, he put no more uh, granulated sugar uh, in there, which it's it's not gonna do a lot because it's you know you're gonna 
crunch the sugar in your teeth and it's not nice. Normally when it comes to, when Bugatti comes to your pl uh, plate, it's still nice and warm. So then you sprinkle icing sugar and that melts and creates a nice, nice uh, stickiness to the top of, of sugar. Uh, but you know, this, this sugar there is not going to do a lot because it's not going to melt and you're just going to feel the crunching it in your teeth. Cinnamon and sugar because I think, I think the majority of people do. Okay, I do see the attraction in that. It is really good. It really transforms it into almost like a, a French toast tasting type of thing, but full of cheese. I'm more of a savory kind of guy, so I like the, I like the straight cheese pastry. That was just nothing short of incredible. That is possibly the best way to get your morning started in Hanya, Crete. Conveniently located, literally just down the road from where we just ate at that cafe, is another legendary place to eat, uh, Yuro Sublaki, uh, which is called Oasi. And this is, the, the owner is a really friendly, jolly man. He has been telling me that they've been open for over 50 years. And you walk, you walk into this little place, it's just a little hole in the... Okay, so um, one of the good signs, let's say, if you're walking around uh, in Greece and you don't know where to eat, uh, you see, this is a, a tiny little place, like a hole in, in the wall sort of thing. But you can see there's a lot, quite a few Greek people in there sitting and uh, uh, talking and, and eating uh, gyro. Uh, which is a good sign because, you know, they, they, they know <laughs> they go there specifically to, to eat gyro. And it's those little holes in the wall that sometimes create this uh, atmosphere of, uh, of, of togetherness in Greece where people will, let's say, go to say hello to the owner or, the, or to the people walking there and they will have something to eat as well there and then the conversation will start and they will end up sitting there for an hour or two hours discussing whatever happens in, uh, in, in life or in politics or, 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 or whatever else uh, is there to discuss. It's, it's uh, not just a hole in the wall to eat but to also speak and uh, it's, it's, it's a hub of exchange of information or, or gossip I would say. Wall style place. You walk in here, and immediately, you your your nose just gets overwhelmed with the the, the sensational aroma of of a. Now I've said in other videos as well the, the difference between a Greek gyro and the kebab that you find, for example, in in the UK, in that a a, a doner kebab uh, in the UK is like processed parts of meat, which they're so processed that you don't actually recognize what sort of parts it is. They can be anything really. I better not say what uh, and a Greek gyro as you can see here it's pork meat uh, but you can see it's layers of pork you know one on top of the other they have been marinated they have been gone through the skewer with oregano on top and then they put uh, in the fire and they slowly are turning around gyro 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 you know round 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 that's why it's called gyros uh, and it's proper cuts of meat and you can see there you can clearly see that what you're gonna eat there are proper cuts of meat and a little bit of fat because the fat melts and it gives that nice taste as well. So no processed uh, parts of the body that you don't want to uh, know about. It's just proper meat in there. Oregano, and then you look at the euro, which is the, the revolving uh, the revolving hunk of meat, uh, which is pork. It slow moves on that spit. You see, it's just it's just caked in oregano and some herbs. Um, and then as soon as you order one, he grabs a hot pita. He adds in some tomatoes and onions and tzatziki, and then adds in the, the meat, and then adds in a handful of seasoning, sprinkles on some salt, and some, I think some other, some, some chili powder, and then he wraps it up into a handheld treat. It's hot and fresh. Okay, I cannot wait to try it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's like this. Okay. Wow. And they have some okay, some tips there. Um, when you eat the gyro, in pita in Greece, make sure that you the, the pita is well grilled. Uh, it has a nice crusty on the outside uh, because it's it, it, it will be amazing. Uh, I'm a bit of a surprise there because normally in Crete, the gyros they make with pita, they are massive. They are the biggest you will find in Greece, and they put loads of stuff in there. Also, they put fried chips in there. Uh, so I would have expected this to come out like that thick 
Honestly, they are massive. This one is most probably one of the smallest uh, pita gyros that I've seen uh, in the island of Crete. Um, it doesn't mean that it's not good. It doesn't mean that it's not delicious. Uh, and if you're on a diet, for example, and, and you want something light, this is probably without the chips, uh, it would be even, in, even better. Uh, but I'm a bit surprised because I would have expected that to be a lot, a lot uh, bigger. Some seats on the inside and it's just a classic, classic. You can, you can smell the history in there along with the oregano. But I like these random like high chairs out here on the on the side of the sidewalk. Oh, it's so hot and fresh. You gotta come take a close up look at what's the, what's all in here though. A handheld beauty, all those thin strips of pork. You can see how much oregano is in there. That's a ziki. Um, and it's warm, it's hot, it's fresh. The now, Mark said tzatziki there. I'm not sure whether that's tzatziki because uh, I don't see any cucumber, for example. Um, okay, I, I will not expect necessarily fresh uh, dill, but I cannot see any cucumber there. Now, I know for a fact that in Crete, uh, they also use a lot of just Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, uh, rather than tzatziki. Um, and it has become a little bit of a trend as well throughout the years. Uh, purely because some uh, they prefer to just have a little bit of yogurt rather than having the garlicky taste. Um, I guess if you're going on a date, uh, you don't want your uh, breath to smell of garlic all night. Um, so this is quite too white for me to be uh, a tzatziki. Uh, but maybe they just used uh, yogurt and uh, garlic uh, rather than uh, cucumbers, and that's why I cannot see it. Uh, but it it seems to me more of just plain Greek yogurt rather than tzatziki. Onions, the chili powder. Okay, I can't talk any longer. Oh, wow. Give it a little squish to get all those ingredients mingling. You can taste the garlic in that tzatziki. And just like you can see. Okay, hands up. It is tzatziki. Uh, you know, you can taste the garlic. So clearly, uh, Oh, and I, yes, uh, I can see slightly, you know, a little bit protruding from the wideness. So that could actually be um, the cucumber, but not a lot of it. Uh, so apologies for that. It is tzatziki after all. Smell the oregano. You can really taste the oregano in there. You've got the fresh onions and the fresh tomatoes, the strips of slow cooked pork, and the pita is just hot and fresh and fluffy. You're gonna get some tzatziki and some sauce on your lips. And you don't want that to go to waste. Mm. This is something you've gotta try when you're in Hanya. Something else as well, which was happening in our Grikosofi restaurant in Liverpool as well, when we served the pita uh, with souvlaki. Um, a lot of people, uh, you know, grab their knives and forks to start eating it and we find that very funny because it's like buying a Mars bar or a Snickers, opening, unwrapping it and then putting it in a plate and using a knife or fork to eat it. No, this is street food, so you have to grab it <laughs> with your hands and, and eat it. And uh, in Greece we say that you cannot properly enjoy a pita gyros or a pita with souvlaki unless you have tzatziki all over <laughs> your mouth. That's when you actually enjoy it. You know, you just grab it and dive into it. Uh, and that is so true. Very, very, very true. And that pork is nice and tender too. And it's literally just caked in oregano. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Really good. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Amazing. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That went down very, very easily. And not only, it, it's actually, he serves uh, what's called a gyro pita. So it's a uh, gyro, which is the, the round of meat, the revolving round of meat within a pita bread. Um, and not only was that just absolutely insanely incredible, you will love it, uh, but the owner's friendliness and kindness will really blow you away too. And that's really what eating and traveling is all about, is meeting so many people who, who are passionate about food. Next up, this food tour and sightseeing tour of Hania is continuing. We're gonna go, which is actually, again, right across the street, and this is the Old Market. Uh, this is a, a really calm and really nice, pleasant market to visit. 
They have all sorts of traditional Cretan uh, ingredients that you can buy here from vegetables. Yes, this is one of the things that I miss uh, about home, uh, the open markets. That's where you go to buy your, your fruits and your vegetables and your meat and your fish. Uh, you know, okay, people go to supermarkets, but nothing beats, you know, those fresh ingredients over there. And they're so much cheaper than uh, getting it from the supermarket. Uh, and it's just, you know, you can spend hours and hours there just, just going through. Um, it's just amazing. Look at all these greens there, all, all these greens uh, that you can have. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, they have some specialty Cretan cheese shops where you can buy your cheese, you can buy Cretan honey, you can buy Cretan spices like lots of oregano. Uh, but then they also have a mix of souvenir shops and clothes shops and then a couple of restaurants and cafes that you can try within the market too. But I like how it's it's open air. It's, uh, well, it's covered, but it's, it's very spacious. It's open air. This market has lots of history to it in Hanya. And this is a great place to wander and to stroll, and especially you and I as food lovers, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to introduce yourself to the, the different gourmet delicacies that Crete has to offer. This is lamb with... Okay, um, a little bit of a pause here, uh, just a little bit of a background. Now, in the old days, uh, a restaurant was different to what restaurants in Greece are nowadays. So in a traditional Greek restaurant, the way that I grew up when I was like a kid, um, you would go into the restaurant, there were tables, you would pick up your table, there's no, the waiter will not show you or whatever, just, you know, pick the table that you wanted, there was no reservations or anything. Um, and then you will stand up and you will go to a counter uh, which uh, the restaurateur had already cooked the, the meals, okay? So you will see all the meals in the counter, obviously, you know, with the lamps warming and keeping them warm, etc. And they will say, you know, we, today we have this and this and this and this and this. And then you will order, say, I'll have a portion of that, I'll have a portion of that, I'll have a portion of that. And you will sit on the table and they will bring them over to you. That's how the old style restaurants were. So they were not open throughout the day. They were open for lunch and uh, some of them then will close and then back throughout the, the evening. Uh, and... Nowadays, these sort of restaurants are very rare to find. Uh, what sometimes you will find is like little places like this one that uh, Mark has just entered that have prepared, let's say, they have already cooked what they're serving for the day. So there's not a set menu. Every day the menu can change. So you know basically that, that, that the food recycles. Uh, sorry, the food uh, renews. Uh, it's a different food. Um, and, uh, you know, you, they, they say we have this and that and that and you can order. So that is what Mark is doing right now. Lettuce, lemon sauce and white wine, fricasse. Okay. Traditional uh, drive. Oh, okay. From lamb. Okay. Very, very good. The lamb. Oh, yeah, I'll have lamb soup. With uh, pasta together. Next up on this Cretan food tour in Hanya, we're stopping at a restaurant. Uh, they serve traditional Cretan food here and they say that all the food is prepared with local meats and vegetables and lots of Cretan virgin olive oil. And this is the type of place that I love. Uh, they cook all the dishes fresh and they, they display all the dishes here in the cabinet that you can pick and choose from all the different Cretan stews and different dishes of the day. This is... Okay, wow. Well, uh, oh, now, um, to somebody who's used to going uh, to restaurants that the uh, the the dish is prepared and presented like a work of art maybe this presentation will put them off but trust me uh, from what i can see there i can see a very nice tasty hearty meal um, i can see the lamb with the soup there i can see the pasta with most probably it's beef meat or it could be lamb but you can see it's beef uh, tripe i will tell you about that later and an aubergine, which is filled with cheese, I guess. Uh, but let's see what Mark is having to eat. Authentic, traditional Cretan food. Everything looks outstanding. Uh, they have a lot of lamb dishes, a lot of meats, and it, they, they, everything looks like they've been slow cooked for hours to, to brew all those flavors together. And I got a, a couple of dishes that I'm absolutely, I'm like, I'm so excited to try right now. I gotta move in 
directly for this lamb soup because it's just, he served it just hot and piping. Uh, there are pieces of lamb here. I got some ribs and some chunks, and then on the bottom is the pasta, and this is a, a traditional lamb soup, Cretan style. So let me just taste that soup, but he told me I Okay, to some of you, you might think, looking at that, oh, is it a soup? It's too watery or it's too oily. Now, in Greece, um, our soups are kind of watery. Uh, they're not the thick ones that you get in the UK, and that's because, you know, Normally in the UK you will, or in other parts of the world, you will boil the ingredients and once they're almost ready, you will put a, a, a blend blender there and you will basically blend them all and it becomes thicker. But in Greece, we hardly ever do that. You know, for example, this is a lamb soup and it has a little bit of orzo pasta in there, as you can see, and it's just cooked in it, the olive oil and the water and its juices and, and that's it. And maybe a bit of salt and pepper. Uh, or maybe a little bit of lemon squeeze. Now, uh, a little bit of a hint, if you have a night out and you had way too much alcohol to uh, drink, this particular soup or even goat uh, soup, uh, it's the perfect, the perfect cure so you don't wake up with a hangover in the morning. Uh, there are places in Crete and all over Greece uh, that uh, they are normally uh, based very close to uh, the Greek um, uh, bouzouka, uh, which is like uh, venues with Greek live music and plate smashing and dancing, etc., that close at five, six o'clock in the morning. So everybody coming out of those places, they're inebriated uh, and they go, they want to go to bed because maybe in a few hours time they have to go to work. So they go to those type of restaurants and they serve soups like that. And you have a soup like that and you go to bed and you wake up and you don't have any hangovers. Uh, but this is lamb and most probably it will be so tender that you, you will grab it from the bones and it will fall off. But this is a nice tasty soup by the looks of it. I could, could garnish with chili flakes, which I absolutely will. Oh, oh yeah. You can taste that that's lamb. That's some real, real lamb right there. And then it has a tomatoey flavor broth a salty tomatoey broth that will be awesome with some citrus and some chilies in it. Oh yes, please. Okay, it's not very common in Crete to use, uh, these are chili flakes, in Greece we call them bukovo. Uh, now in Crete, very rarely people like spicy food anyway, so bukovo is normally, you'll find it in the north of, uh, of Greece. Uh, north of Greece uh, eat quite spicy food. Uh, but Mark, coming from Thailand, he likes his food spicy, so I don't blame him from, uh, for eating this soup uh, with a lot of chili uh, in there. Chili flakes, and hit that with that lime, squeeze in that, that, that citrus. Yeah, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what type of citrus this is. It looks... Okay, a bit of confusion there for Mark. Uh, it is a lemon. It is a lemon. Uh, it's not a lime. Uh, you have lemon trees all over. Uh, Greece uh, and sometimes you will pick them up while they're yellow but sometimes you will pick them up when they're green and this is a green one at the moment but it's definitely a lemon like a cross between a lemon and a lime okay and I have to go in directly for that that lamb oh look at that look at that cap that cap of meat okay this sort of needs to be just picked up and scoop over okay perfect There's nothing better than going in for a bite of meat and coming out with just the completely clean bone. When I, I will say it again, if you go to Greece, you have to try the lamb. I don't know the idea of lamb you get in your own country. Some people say that it has a smell that they don't like. Uh, but lamb in Greece, uh, you will not find taster. Uh, the way that we cook it in Greece. Uh, I mean, I am biased, obviously, uh, but I challenge you to go to Greece and eat lamb dishes and then you can decide for yourself whether you liked or not, but definitely try in Greece, definitely. I saw the lamb stomach stew. I, I had to go for it. This is a, a well-known dish in Crete and you can see... Okay, <laughs> I have to make a stop here because I have to stay... Uh, this is not for the faint-hearted. Uh, what you can see here, apart from the courgette on the side, 
uh, they are stomach walls. Yes, I know. Um, stomach walls cooked in casserole with, you know, with tomato, etc. Um, maybe it's lamb or, or goat, I don't know. Uh, now, I have tried the um, twice. And to be honest, I loved it. I loved it. Um, it has a particular texture. Sorry, it's uh, it's 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 soft, but then you once you start chewing, it kind of melts, and it's really nice with the tomatoes, etc. It's an acquired taste. I liked it. Some people don't like it. Uh, some people, especially that are not Greeks, might. <laughs> Uh, see this dish and say what is it and when they find out that it's uh, stomach balls <laughs> they're gonna run away scared uh, but if you're not afraid to try new things uh, you might want to try it and see for yourself uh, i personally liked it a lot these are like little little pads of pads of stew right here this thing is quite a quite an interesting oh wow that's like the entire oh look at that it's like okay i don't really know what that is <laughs> but you can see it's kind of a... An... Uh, I can definitely tell you what it is. Um, it is definitely wrapped in, intensi in intestines, okay? I don't know what the inside is, so I hope that Mark will cut it so we can see. Uh, but that wrapped is, is, is an intestine. Uh, we call them gardumbes or gardubakia. Uh, sometimes it's uh, hearts and lungs uh, wrapped in intestines and cooked. Um, so, yes, that's what it is. It's an olive oil stew. I think there's some herbs in there, maybe oregano, and then there's a zucchini over here on the side. But this look appears to it like it, it's been stewed for a very, very long time. I'll go in for. You can see the different the different uh, textures. I'll go in for two different two different types of the of the stomach. And this is why I love Mark because he is the type of person that is not scared, but how the food looks or what it is that he's gonna try. He just tries it no matter what and uh, you know I'm, I'm like that i will try anything at least once when it comes to food and uh, you know i i, I absolutely <laughs> admire him for that i'm a huge lover of tripe i love tripe but sometimes sometimes depending on how it's cooked it can be either tender or rubbery or very rubbery this is really tender like your first bite you do have a little bit of bounce your teeth bounce off the off the the tripe but then after that you just it just sinks into them it's very very tender you can taste those those little like that those textural they're like kind of like sponges but kind of like kind of like pieces of towel at the same time get this with some chili flakes going on the chili is not really very spicy you can eat it by the spoonful and then for this bite I'll, I'll grab a piece of bread break bread dip right into that sauce you always got to go with the soft side down. yeah I'm surprised that he already hasn't uh, grabbed bread because if you were a Greek your first point of uh, of action no matter which dish you try is to grab a piece of bread and dip it in the sauce and uh, accompany it but that's all right down so that you can absorb as much of that goodness as possible and I will scoop up a few pieces of the the tripe as well the the, the stuff That is, a, that is a dish right there. The last dish I got is an eggplant, which has been stuffed with feta cheese. Oh, and more things too. There are more things in here too. Oh, 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 oh. there looks like some peppers and some carrots and all sorts of things. Oh, that, I didn't even, I didn't even barely touch it with my spoon and fork and it just like completely fell apart. And you've got some cheese here. Look at how just completely soft that eggplant is. Okay, I'm gonna, Grab a piece, make sure I get some of that cheese. Yeah, very simple, just uh, a stuffed aubergine, really, with uh, carrots and some greens and some cheese. Um, let's see what he thinks about it. With it and mix it up. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's hot. That's right out of the oven. That is so juicy. Oh, that's like a, just a crazy juicy eggplant. Yes, if you're into your aubergines, um, Greece has a lot of different styles that you, they, they cook it. Uh, so whether it's in the oven or in the casserole or fried, uh, I'm sure you will find a dish that you will like. Um, 
some people don't like aubergines uh, i personally like them uh, it's very nutritious nutritious uh, so yeah try it and it just melts in your mouth all the food is good this soup is outstanding and i already ate that other piece of lamb but i just have to show you the tenderness of this lamb it's just it's just mind-blowingly tender watch watch oh that is a that is a beautiful sight If you're not already hungry, you have a problem, I guess. <laughs> I am starving already. That is a happy, happy soup. The tripe is also outstanding, but I have to be honest, I have no idea what this is. Let me let me re rehydrate it with some of that oil. What could this be? I'm I'm honestly not sure. This is some kind of kind of tube but it looks wrapped at the same time um i guess we just kind of break into this oh it's so tender oh and look at that yeah oh it's just like wrapped up i think this is a bite yeah i guess i guess again it's it's a stomach piece is wrapped in intestine intestines uh that's as simple as that that needs a, an extra hit of chili and by the way i'm loving how they have chili here as well oh it's the perfect complement Oh yeah, it's tender. It has the same texture as the other pieces of tripe, but but without the padding. Oh, oh, as you keep on tasting it though. Oh, oh, oh. okay, you can taste a little bit of like entrail remains, if you know what I mean. And as I keep on chewing, the more- Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I know what Mark means. Um, uh, I think it's important to explain, basically. Um, when you want to try um, things like that, like tripe, uh, intestines and stuff in Greece, trust me, they are delicious, but you have to be careful as to where you actually try them. And the reason for that is that um, to properly cook them and, and taste and, and, and eat them in a safe, let's say, way, uh, they require a lot of careful cleaning or cleansing because at the end of the day you're talking about the stomachs and whatever it is in there and also the intestine the intestines and what is in the intestines if you know what i mean um, so for example i would not personally go to a, a restaurant in greece that i've never been to uh, and try those dishes purely because i don't know whether the the cook has uh, properly cleaned them uh, I've tried them from my family, my mom, my grandma, my aunties, because I know and I've seen them clean them. They spend hours, especially the intestines that have stuff that you don't really want to put in your mouth. Uh, you know, the intestine is, is very long. So I remember that they put them in some sort of uh, a lot of lemon and uh, uh, olive oil and some sort of vinegary thing that, you know, and any acidity and that they, they wash them off and keep them there for hours and hours in the fridge and then they will take a specific specifically made long sort of thing that they will insert it to along the length of the intestine and grab the end of it and pull it so basically you turn the intestine inside out and you repeat this cleaning process again so what you do is you clean the intestine inside out and for hours and hours and making sure that there's nothing there that is left that you are not you're going to put in your mouth so if you notice there mark suddenly you know there was something tasting there that didn't seem in a, you know it seemed out of place and unfortunately for me it seems that uh, this particular uh, garduba um, had not been cleaned properly and it left that taste uh, so be very careful uh, if you know in greece somebody that knows and trusts a person that cooks these things by all means try them because they are delicious uh, but don't just go into any restaurant to try them because you don't know if they have been properly cleaned or not you have been warned but properly cleaned and properly cooked they are one of the best things that uh, you're gonna try while in greece i can taste kind of some some natural particles like maybe some some fibers of grass 
within that. That's a that's a bit of an adventurous bit right there. I think that's a special the special piece. Just finished with that meal. That was some incredibly good Cretan food. This is a place that you can come right it's right in the within the market in Hanya town and you can get some authentic Cretan food. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit full now. I think it's time to to walk around a little bit. Old Town Crete is just a fantastic place to explore on foot. You can walk around the narrow alleys and there's something you can discover everywhere you, you walk. And we're navigating our way over to a church now. Church is called Agios Nicolas and it's right within the Old Town. It kind of has a... Yes, that particular church, I'm not sure if it's the only one in the world, but certainly in Greece, the way it has uh, both a minaret for the uh, imams to, you know, during the Islam uh, occupation of Crete, uh, the Muslim occupation of Crete, uh, if you saw, and one with bells, uh, Christian bells uh, to bell, because Crete, you know, Greece for uh, 400 years were under the Ottoman occupation, uh, and therefore um, they had turned some of the Greek churches um, um, into Muslim temples uh, and this particular church kept one side of the uh, minaret and kept the uh, Christian bell there. Fortress like appearance to it. They don't allow any photos or videos on the inside so you'll have to come see it for yourself but the inside is also really spectacular. It's colorful, uh, there are beautiful paintings and pieces of artwork and I also really like the floor inside as well. One of the places that you will inevitably come to explore is the central promenade uh, right within the old town of Hanya. And it's kind of the, the central part of old town. It's the place where now you'll find a lot of restaurants and cafes that surround the water, but it's really extremely picturesque. Yes, this is the uh, old port of uh, Hanya. Uh, and I guess if you Google Hanya, it's the first photo that you will see of the old port. It's a really beautiful uh, area, um, uh, but a, a lot of people make the mistake to just explore and eat and drink around that area. And because it's the most touristy part, uh, most often than not, the, 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 let's say the secret places where they can get great food are not within that vicinity. Uh, so you need to move into deeper into the old town, away from that port, uh, to to eat uh, in some really nice places. I don't say that there are no restaurants there that serve great food, uh, but you really need to ask the locals uh, to point them out. Uh, but this is a great place to just sit and have a few drinks uh, and uh, and admire the view because it is really beautiful. It is really beautiful. Picturesque. It's a great place to take a mor take a morning or afternoon stroll, especially. And the water, what impresses me is just how clean and clear the water is. I'm gonna keep on walking along the promenade and try to make my way to the lighthouse. Now, um, if I was Mark, but again, Mark is not Greek, uh, I would have cut the music at this point and just let the natural sound of the waters splash him around uh, be the soundtrack because uh, I don't know, there's something with the Mediterranean Sea and the water and whenever I go to Greece I can sit for hours and close my eyes and just hear the water splashing uh, and it's just, it, 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 it gives you a feeling that I don't get anywhere else. And on my way to the lighthouse though I'm passing through the old Venetian harbor now home to some really incredible yachts. It's actually quite a long walk. You need to walk all the way around, past the arsenal, past all the docks, all the, the ship docks, the yacht docks, uh, to be able to reach the, the base of the, the lighthouse. Yeah. I finally made it to the base of the lighthouse barricade, uh, which creates the, the docks and the calm water. And there's quite amazing views from here because you can see the, the shore and the old town, and that's the arsenal back there and all the boats. Uh, but the lighthouse is a ways up ahead. My 
White House itself is beautiful, but the views of Hanya, the old town, and the mountains in the background is spectacular. And you can do a little bit of rock hopping to get to the, to the other side of the lighthouse. It's just on a base of rocks. Oh, the view is spectacular. And look at the lighthouse above me. Oh, I'm getting the... the... I could just sit on the rocks where Mark is right now and just look ahead in the sea uh, and just feel the breeze and uh, smell the iodine of the water and just spend hours there just daydreaming really do absolutely thinking of absolutely nothing you don't need to you know all, all your worries i guess at that moment for me personally disappear you know all i want is to feel the sun and to feel the breeze and to see ahead just seeing nothing else and hear the the waves flashing uh, it's a great moment for me personally sea breeze you can see islands and just the rugged peaks of crete oh man this is this is fantastic. That sea breeze is amazing. I had a little bit of a rest after going to the lighthouse. Uh, but the lighthouse was well worth a visit. You get some amazing views when you walk out to the to the lighthouse. Highly recommended. And we are now walking. It's going to be a little bit of a walk, but we wanted to enjoy the evening on our way to a seafood restaurant about two and a half kilometers up the up the coast. The walk so far has been beautiful. We're coming up on another swimming beach, and I think the restaurant that we're going to is right over there, like before the cliff starts. Getting closer to seafood. Along with the seafood, part of the reason that this restaurant is so well known is because it's right along the water, the beautiful water, and also along the beautiful uh, abandoned buildings, which sets the, the atmosphere. So they set the tables out right on the beach, right on the water, and we are arriving right now. We made it to the restaurant. This place has so much character. It's a really cool place and it's a really popular place. And so that's part of the reason. I mean, um, <laughs> forget health and safety, you know. Uh, this is proper dining. I mean, you know, having a table next to the water can't get any better, can't get any better no matter what other people may say to you. Tables, like all of these tables here on the, on the shore are all reserved. So there was just three tables up here that are not reserved. So Ying and I got a, a table up here, uh, but I'm not complaining at all. The view is still spectacular and the food, the sipo, I came here mostly for the food rather than the view, but the view is fantastic. It's so quiet over here. It's among deserted abandoned buildings and the water is calm and just lapping against the rocks and this is fantastic hi we're all here to eat some seafood the first round of food has all arrived yes remember the bread for the previous video always there always there you have to have some grilled bread with oregano and olive oil Definitely. They brought us a big plate of bread uh, topped with oregano and then we got some fried fresh Okay, calamaria. Now this is how proper calamaria should be served. Not the round little pieces like, you know, emulating um, onion rings. No. A proper calamari has to be whole, even with the tentacles, with the moustache, because the tentacles are really crispy, really crispy. Uh, so you just squeeze a lot of lemon and you just eat them. Amazing. Squid. This is one of the classic things that you have to eat when you are in Crete. It's called dacos. Yes, that's Cretan dacos. Uh, I've put a short video as well as to how to make it. Uh, mine was with uh, feta cheese. Uh, this one is not. I think this is mizithra cheese as well. Or I thought you know, maybe mizithra cheese. Uh, but it is a great thing to have in Crete because the the um, uh, the dacos, which is the uh, the, the bread, oops, sorry about that, <laughs> which is the bread, uh, it's, it's so big and nice and crusty. 
and then I also got some mussels, and also I had to go for a plate of fried zucchini. So this looks all looks and smells spectacular. Oh wow, that melts in your mouth. That's like eggplant, but even like, even like mushier. Fried uh, courgettes and fried aubergine slices as well is another great starter in Greece. Uh, I recommend that you uh, try them. Um, some restaurants don't make them as crispy as I'd like. Uh, I prefer mine to be crispy. Some of them are not putting them when the oil is really hot uh, and they come out a little bit soggy. So you have to be a little bit careful. I prefer them crispy. And like more dissolving. Next up, I gotta try the dacos. It is a, a rusk, which is a crunchy piece of bread on the bottom topped with a tomato herb puree and then Cretan cheese. And this is a huge dacos. Oh wow, I think you, I think you have to go in with your, your spoon and everything. And that bread just sort of absorbs all that tomato. Look at that. Okay, something about Cretan tacos because it is something that has confused a lot of non-Greeks. You don't eat it with fork and knife. Purely because sometimes if it's too hard, you can just not cut it. You know, it's just gonna go everywhere in the place. Uh, but because you water it or with the olive oil it gets softer, all you have to do is use a knife to cut a little bit of piece and use your mouth to eat it. I know that some people don't feel very comfortable using their hands, but this is Greek. This is how Greeks eat. We don't eat with our hands, but you know, we use our hands to, to, to eat a lot of the stuff. Uh, but Cretan tacos is definitely not something that you will use your knife and your fork because you're not gonna enjoy it. It's just gonna go crumbly all over the place and you must probably need a spoon afterwards to just put the whole pieces in your mouth. Mm. That's, a, that's a wonderfully simple combination. It's like a sponge. At first it's crunchy, but then it just absorbs all of that tomato juice. And then you've got the salty cheese on top. You've got the oregano, and I like that it's really, really refreshing. It's served cool. Next up for the mussels, which have been cooked in olive oil. You can see there's a pool of olive oil at the bottom, and I'm gonna go, just go ahead and squeeze on that lemon because I, I know it needs it. This is, this is uh, what it needs. And this guy right here, there's some parsley on top. Okay, mussels. Now, as a Greek, I would, I would hardly ever uh, order mussels uh, in a Greek restaurant purely because there are so many other shellfish that you can try in Greece, local shellfish, that are even better than mussels. Uh, I mean, I would eat mussels when I go to uh, places like Belgium uh, uh, or even the UK, etc., because that is normally the standard shellfish that you, you can find. But when in Greece, um, I would say tourists order mussels mainly purely because it's the only shellfish uh, that may most probably recognize in the menu. Uh, but hopefully when I go to Greece, uh, I will show you live uh, which ones to order. Oh, look at that. Let me pull him right. Oh, you can feel how juicy it is immediately. Oh, those aren't like huge muscles but they are hugely juicy. It's like absolutely pure. Um, maybe just you can taste a hint of that olive oil and then just that, that lemon that I squeezed on top. Scoop some of that olive oil into this shell with that, with that muscle and eat it all together in one. Oh, that's gonna be a juicy one. Oh, with that olive oil like soup at the bottom. Oh, that's extraordinary. It's mostly all just because of those fresh mussels. I think the squid has just been very lightly breaded uh, or battered and then deep fried. Oh, a mussel just fell onto the plate. <laughs> okay, I can... And I like what Mark is doing there with all this seafood. You have to squeeze fresh lemon on the seafood. It is just brings it to another level. Uh, I know some people are not very keen on lemon, but trust me, uh, seafood and lemon go head in hand. You have to have lemon, <laughs> squeeze lemon on your seafood. Detach the head. I'll go in for this body section. Oh, you can see some of those eggs squishing out. That's insanely tender. And it's like those eggs in there, they're like butter. Don't get scared to try the tentacles 
they are really really nice and depending on how it is cooked they can be very crispy and they can like uh, with mark they can be buttery as well you know the consistency but they're equally tasty oh that just melts in your mouth and because it has eggs in it it literally like like gushes with like a buttery consistency in your mouth Oh yeah. Originally from US, but from Thailand. Thailand. Uh, from Thailand, yes, yes. From Bangkok. Uh, for two different types. This fish with the the stomach, the liver. We don't we don't clean it. Uh, we leave everything inside. Okay. It's like pate. One of the best things about this restaurant is the fresh fish, and they the it's just straight out. I, I like the way you carry your son. Oh, thank you very much. Very clever. Thank you. <laughs> this is an amazing place. And you can go in there. They have the fresh catch of the day. Uh, you can choose your fish. So we just got two different fish to, to try for this meal. That is a crazy good muscle. Just finished with those appetizers and now just taking a little stroll and enjoying the, the sunset views such a fantastic place and right now now that the sun is going down it's becoming even even better and quieter and more peaceful and now the sun is not so hot and intense you cannot beat the sunset like that i mean come on <laughs> come on uh, it, it, it is the stuff that people say it's the stuff of movies but in greece in a sense you experience it every day especially in the summer months uh, you know, you don't even have to go to a restaurant to have a thing like that. You can just, you know, grab a few things and a nice bottle of wine and just sit in a beach or by the rocks and just be like that. It's as simple as that. Thank you. It's going back and forth about. Okay, that is another dish that when you go to Greece, you have to try. Uh, grilled fish with lado lemono sauce or vinaigrette. Uh, what I mean vinaigrette is a simple concoction and I will show you in one of the recipe videos uh, in the future. It's basically lemon, lemon juice and olive oil blended together. It makes a th kind of thick vinaigrette and you just drizzle it uh, all over the grilled fish and it's just delicious. Uh, another thing as well, pretty much as I've said to you, if you want to try grilled fish in Greece, make sure that um, the people that recommend your restaurant uh, recommend you for the right reason purely because there are restaurants that say the, fe the, the fish is fresh i.e. caught on the same day while in fact it's not it's frozen uh, so uh, the price <laughs> kind of gives it away that you know for fresh fish it's a lot more expensive than frozen fish uh, but definitely if you find a, a great place that especially um, um, or serves uh, fresh fish, grilled fish like that is definitely a must try because it is amazing. Out deciding which fish to order, but the owner finally talked me into ordering two fish, both of them kind of small in size so that we could taste. He said they're just completely different textures and different tastes, so we had to get them both. Say hello to, to this guy. He looks fantastic. Look at that sauce. Oh yes, uh, a lot of people get a bit scary or put off because in Greece you serve the fish with the tail and the head so they get a bit squeamish to see that the head is staring at them but that's because a lot of Greeks like eating the head uh, you know, uh, from the mouth uh, to even the eyeballs uh, to even the cheeks they find things crunchy that they like to eat uh, and that is the reason why um, you know, in Greece we don't like throwing food away, so why waste uh, the tail? For example, a nice crispy tail at the end, it's really tasty, you might as well have the whole fish. Okay, I'm gonna dig into the, the cod first. He said this is the, the softest fish you'll ever have. Okay, oh, and just look at that appearance, look at that flakiness, and that it does look unbelievably soft and melt in your mouth. Now, Mark, be careful of that little bone at the bottom of the spoon over there. Uh, when you eat fish, 
uh, especially if it comes open like that make sure that you look after because there are little bones in there that if you don't are not careful are gonna get stuck in your throat and it's not very comfortable you know swallowing and getting a little bit of a pinch every now and then so make sure that when you have a bite you see the little bones and you take them off before you eat them oh yeah that is indeed one of the the most tender fish the texture is just amazing it's so soft it's so juicy you can tell that it's cod it's almost like the texture of crab almost okay and next up for the, the other fish which i think locally it's called scaros mm. Mm. it's more of that like um kind of drier texture kind of flakier kind of a little bit stringier as opposed to the cod oh they're both yeah they are both are incredibly different in texture and i think that is an olive oil sauce that they put over it that that makes it juicier and and really fragrant as well and i'll take some of the fish as well it's it's the lemon and olive oil uh, vinaigrette i think the cod is the winner okay one of the benefits of eating this fish that the owner told me is that they keep the liver in it and you eat the liver Yes, some people don't like it and it just get thrown away. Some people like it. So you might as well serve the whole fish as it has been cooked. And if people would like to have the liver or sometimes the eggs as well, uh, they can they can have. Uh, I personally not so keen about it, but Mark eats everything, so. And eggs too. Mm. Oh, that is insanely creamy. Oh, that's like fish pudding. Just made it back to the house after an amazing dinner. Uh, the sunset with the water and those old abandoned buildings really made for a serene environment. The food was also outstanding. Those two fish at the end were awesome. And it's been an amazing day in Hanya Crete. Everything we did, all the... Okay guys, well that was uh, another of Mark's uh, videos in Crete. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that the information that I've given you throughout the video will help you understand a little bit more about Greek culture and food. Uh, I'll keep on looking at this rather than here anyway uh, but if you have uh, seen any other videos around YouTube about Greece anything to do with Greece and you would like them to have a look and uh, you know give my reaction to it by all means let me know in the comments below and I will be more than happy to do that uh, until then thank you very very much for watching um, and uh, make sure that you stick around because at the end of this video I'm gonna give you some links to some other videos at Greekosophy that you might be interested about uh, don't forget to subscribe so anytime we upload another video you are the first to know and watch it and if you like our videos make sure that you share them with your friends and your family so they can themselves uh, uh, start learning a little bit about Greece uh, but again thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video bye bye